It's risky business for Risk Five as Linus Torvalds is furious over a proposed change and pull request that would add in big Indian support to Risk Five. We're going to be reading through what Linus has to say about all of this and the reasoning on why he's so frustrated with this proposal. So let's get into it. And this all started out with Ben Dukes, senior engineer. Is there any chance some of the big Indian work we did is getting in for this round? And Linus replied to Ben, and it starts out fiery. Oh Christ, is someone seriously working on BE, big Indian support, in 2025? Why? Seriously, that sounds like just stupid. Is there some actual real reason for this? Or is it more of the risk five is used in an academic design classes and so people just want to do endianness for academic reasons? Because I'd be more happy to just draw a line in the sand and say new endianness problems are somebody else's problem and tell people to stop being silly. Let's not complicate things for no good reason and there is no reason to add new endianness. Risk five is enough of a mess with millions of silly configuration issues already. Don't make it even worse. Lean is definitely throwing some shade at the Risk Five architecture. Tell people to just talk to their therapists and said, that's much more productive. Really signed off Linus. And Linus has a really strong stance here. I think the reason Linus is frustrated here, every time you introduce another NDNS mode, you're really doubling the testing, increasing bug potential and complicating things. And Linus has seen this over the decades through Indian bugs. And to him, it really feels like adding new pain for no gain. As you can see, Linus has a long-standing frustration with proposals on adding complexity without a strong justification. And basically calls it an academic toy idea here and wants nothing to do with it. So no one else got to respond to this before Linus took on and continued talking about this. He continues on in another email. Okay, I just Googled this and I'm putting my foot down. We are not preemptively supporting Big Indian on Risk 5. The documented reasoning for that craziness is too stupid for words. <laughs> that's that's serious. But since risk5.org did put it in words, I'll just quote those words here. Definitely not happy about this one. There are still applications where the way data is stored matters, such as the protocols that move data across the internet, which are defined as Big Endian. So with a little Indian system needs to inspect or modify a network packet, it has to swap the big Indian values to little Indian and back, a process that makes it as many as 10 to 20 instructions on risk five target, which doesn't implement the ZBB extension. So to break this down a little bit for you, most CPUs today are little Indian. To read and write these network headers, the CPUs often need to swap the byte order to match the native format and without ZBB support, which is bit manipulation extension on a RISC-V architecture processor, byte swapping isn't cheap and claimed here, basically it takes 10 to 20 instructions to perform an equivalent byte swap or a single instruction. And that's the reason why they want to implement big Indian mode into the kernel for their architecture. Anyways, Linus breaks this down for us as well. In other words, it is suggesting that RISC-V add a big Indian mode due to a, internet protocols, where byte swapping is not an issue. B, using some risk 5 imp implementations don't do the existing ZBB extension as an excuse. This is plain insanity. First off, even if the byte swapping was a real cost for networking, it's not. The real costs tend to be all in the memory subsystems. Just implement the damn ZBB extension. It's only going to get worse from here. Don't go. We're too incompetent to implement ZBB. So we're now asking everybody else feel the pain of a much worse extension and fragmenting risk five further. I'm hoping this is some April fool's joke, but that page is dated March 10th, 2025 close, but not close enough. This is the kind of silly stuff that just makes risk five look bad. Ben, I'm afraid that the page has further reading point to code. Think I see some config CPU big Indian has already made it in, but this needs to stop. The mainline kernel is for mainline development, not for random experience that make the world a worse place. And this is very important to Linus. He has stood his ground on this many, many times as we've read through many Linux kernel mailing lists in the fact that he doesn't want the kernel space to be a place for testing tools, ideas, and whatnot. It has to be stable and it has to work. Also, do not break user space. Those are the real two big capstones 
for Linus in how he approaches merging things into the kernel. But before we move on, don't forget to subscribe below. Smash that like button on the way back up so more people get to see this. And yes, we're open source. And that very much means that anybody is more than welcome to try and prove me wrong. If it turns out that Big Indian Risk V becomes a real thing that is relevant and actually finds a place in the Risk V ecosystem, then of course we should support it at, an, at that point in the mainline kernel. But I really do think that it actually makes Risk V only worse and that we should not actively help the fragmentation. Signed off, Linus. So the core stance here is Linus does not want Big Indian support for Risk V in the mainline kernel and drawing a hard line on adding it preemptively. Clearly, he's rejecting this because the justification is completely weak. A real fix already exists, and Big Indian would fragment Risk V further. He calls the proposal insane, silly, as random experimentation does not belong in the mainline, and he has stood on that ground for a long time, as there have been similarly blocked features in the past, like unnecessary compiler support. Lena says block support for weird compiler flags and versions in the past, or exotic CPU quirks or configurations over the years, developers have tried to upstream support for rare CPU features like weird memory modules or odd scheduling hacks, and Linus wanted nothing to do with those as well, as those were just-in-case features and he doesn't like just-in-case in the kernel. It bloats things. Either way, Linus wasn't the only one to comment, as there's other developers and maintainers who put their thoughts into this. We're going to read through this. If you want to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map, all available at SavvyNick.com. Now let's read through what others have to say. Do they agree with Linus? Do they not? Let's read. This one's from Eric here in response to Linus. Please, let's not do big Indian Risk v kernels. This mistake was made for ARM64. It's finally getting fixed. Let's not make the same mistake again. Eric even experimented as I recently added ARM64 Big Indian to my own testing matrix, but I look forward to dropping that as well as not having to start testing on RISC-V Big Indian 2. Of course, that's just one example of my own experience. There's a lot more that Config CPU Big Indian creates problems for, signed off Eric. Another dev chiming in saying that this is just a bad idea. And then we get another one from Linus. This one's long, so buckle up. This is in response to none of that was really done as a deliberate attempt to add support for Big Indian in cases that assuages concerns you might have about the taste of the Arch maintainers. Thinks it does. As others have mentioned, the ARM64 support ends up being problematic and people are actively trying to remove it. Big Indian is dead. There is no good reason to support it. Legacy architectures designed and implemented back in the days when it wasn't dead yet. But it's been a huge pain and the world has moved on. Dealing with Big Endian with any halfway modern infrastructure is a dead end, since things like PCI Express are all fully little Endian. If somebody really wants to create bad hardware in this day and age, please do make a Big Endian and also add the following very traditional features for shit for brains hardware. Virtually tagged caches. You can't really claim to be the worst of the worst without virtually tagged caches. Tears of joy as you debug cache alias issues and flushing caches on context switches. Only do aligned memory accesses. Bonus point for not even faulting and just loading and storing garbage instead. Expose your pipeline details to in the ISA. Delayed branch slots for explicit instruction grouping is a great way to show that you eat crayons for breakfast before you start designing your hardware platform. That one's just too funny. Moving on, extended memory windows. It was good enough for 8-bit machines in order to address more memory. I can't get over the last... <laughs> All right, back to this. It was good for 8-bit machines in order to address more memory and became high mem.sys staple in the DOS world and then got taken up by both x86 and ARM in their 32-bit days as high mem support. It has decades of history and an architecture cannot be called truly awful if it doesn't support some kind of high mem crap. These are golden. I didn't realize he'd go through a list of entirely failed ideas and implementations here. Anyways, continuing on, register windows. It's like extended memory, but for your registers, please make sure to also have hardware support for filling and spilling them, but make it limited enough that the system software has to deal with faults at critical times. Nesting exceptions is joyful. Bonus points if you are rotating and overflowing them silently. Just corrupts data. Keep those users on their toes. In fact, require software fallbacks for pretty much anything unusual. TLB fills, 
They might only happen every 10 to 20 instructions, so make them fall to some software implementation to really show your mad hardware skills. Denormals or any other FP precision issues, no, no. Don't waste hardware on getting it right. Software people love to clean up after you. Remember, your mom picked up your dirty laundry from your floor and software people are like the super moms of the world. Another one, make exceptions asynchronous. That's another great way to make sure that people stay on their toes. Make sure machine check exceptions can happen in any context. So they're guaranteed to have a dead machine anytime anything goes wrong. But you should also take the non-maskability of NMI to heart and make sure that the software cannot possibly write code that is truly atomic. Because of the NM, is NMI is what makes it great. Floating point, make sure that the special cases you don't deal with in hardware are also delayed so that the software people have extra joy in trying to figure out what the F happened. See the previous entry, they live for that stuff. I'm sure I've forgotten many other points and I'm sure that the hardware people will figure it out. Signed off Linus. Wow, that was actually a banger from Linus. I really did enjoy reading through those. And we got other replies from other developers and maintainers all in support of Linus's message. No one wants big Endian support for Risk v and clearly it's not going to happen. I do wanna know your thoughts below though. Is there any reason we'd use big Endian at this point? Is what Linus is saying a little bit too harsh or has he hit the nail right on the head? Let's talk about it. Also, don't forget to subscribe below, smash that like button on the way back up, catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.